What is happening guys? Welcome back to Rev Your Garage. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about clutches. We're going to compare a drum clutch versus a disc clutch, go over all their features and how they work. We're also going to compare them a little bit to a CBT setup. We're going to help you decide which one is the best for you and also uh, how the best way to set these items up. So we get emails all the time on people asking if they should run a clutch or a CVT. And the simple way to answer that question is, what are you using your project or vehicle for? Uh, now we do a lot of trail riding and a lot of cruising around, so we like to use a CVT setup. And when we're using a built engine, we like to use the Super 30 Series pulley. Now remember, we have all these items linked in our video's description. So if you're interested in any of these, you can click down there and find out where you could buy them from. And that does help the channel continue to do these videos. Um, now, if you're trail riding and cruising, I highly recommend the CVT because of how it performs on takeoff and climbing hills. You're going to get a ton of low end power with the CVT, but you'll also get a lot of top end speed out of them. Uh, because a CVT starts out in a lower gearing ratio, and then as you rev out the engine, it switches over to a secondary gear ratio, uh, you get a lot of the best of both world type scenario. So um, another big thing is when you come back in the power, the smoothness that a CVT offers. So if you're cruising around your neighborhood, you come out of a turn and you're out of the throttle, then you go back into the throttle, you'll notice a smoother transition back into power with a CVT, where a clutch will give you a more punchy feel, a more kick back into the power, and that's why we would use a clutch in a racing scenario. So basically, if you're racing, whether it's drag racing or kart racing, I would highly recommend a clutch setup. Uh, because in trails and stuff, you're going to burn out clutches more often because of the slippage that you might have on heels. Uh, now, when we're talking about CVTs, these 30 series can handle a ton of horsepower. We've had engines in the mid 20s running these CVTs and they work perfectly fine as long as you do your gear ratio correctly. Now, if we're talking about a mini bike with a 19 or 20 inch tire and say we're running a 15 horsepower engine, normally I like to stick around a six to one gear ratio on my box. Uh, for my weight i am a bigger dude lonnie is half the weight of me so he can go on down to a five to one ratio and not burn any belts and still get really good takeoff and he gets a lot of top end where i need six to one and if you're wanting to climb a ton of hills and do a lot of hill climbing out in the woods then you might want to go to a 7.2 to one ratio uh, but you really need to do the math on calculators that are available online to find out your gear ratio and it'll kind of explain on those calculators the best way to set up your gear ratio. But on mini bikes, generally uh, with the 20 inch, 19 inch tire, six to one is what I always tell people the best all around. You can be a pretty heavy guy, you can have a lot of power and these belts will handle pretty well. Now, when we're talking about a drum clutch versus a disc based clutch, there's a lot of differences between these two. A drum clutch is more your run of the mill, most affordable way to get a project done. That's why a lot of people run these clutches and that's why stuff like Coleman mini bikes that uses these clutches, they're cheap and they're easy to swap out if you do burn one out and you can run jack shafts with them to get your gear ratio lower and they actually perform pretty well as long as you can get a pretty low gear ratio if you're riding off road, but I still recommend a CVT over these drum style clutches. Um, this drum style clutch is really close to the Max Torque design. This is a Chinese knockoff, the one we got on the table here. We never use a drum style clutch. Um, now, they work really simple. They basically work off centrifugal force. And this is gonna be the same whether it's a drum clutch or a disc based clutch. They're both working off centrifugal force. Now, the inside part of the clutch is where the clutch shoes are and the springs. And this goes onto the crankshaft. So this is always spinning with the crankshaft. Now, the outside drum or the bail of the clutch has the sprocket attached to it and it's free spinning. And that is until you hit the right amount of RPMs and centrifugal force makes the shoes in the clutch sling out and they'll start making contact and friction with the drum or the bell of the clutch. When this happens, it starts to engage the outer bell, which in return spins the sprocket and takes off the vehicle. It's a very simple setup. There is a lot of heat that happens in clutches uh, versus CVT. And that's why if you don't have them set up properly, you can get a lot of burning in your clutch when you're trying to take off. If you don't have the right gear ratio in your vehicle. Now there are some simple adjustments you can make to this clutch. Not only of course the sprocket, you can swap this out for a larger or smaller sprocket and you can use lighter or heavier springs. Both those will help to engage the clutch at different RPMs. Uh, so you can really adjust where your clutch comes in at so you can take off good and get good power out of your clutch. Uh, so there are a lot of different available springs and they're different colors for their weight and there's charts on places like Max Torque that'll tell you what shoes with what weights 
uh, or what shoe weight with what springs will equal up to what RPM. So, uh, but again, this is your most basic style drive tree that you can put on a go-kart or a mini bike. We never use them, but they are good if you're trying to get something done in the meantime, and then maybe replace it with one of these two in the future. Now, when we're talking about disc clutches, we have EC's Ego clutch here, and this is their three disc model. This is a racing style clutch that is super high quality. It's one of the best clutches you can get on the market. It's made from billet aluminum as well as billet steel. It has a proprietary blend of material on the disc that have high performance and longevity out of them. They're amazing clutches with a lot of adjustability. And that's the main thing from a disc clutch, from a drum clutch, is the amount you can adjust them and the quality and strength that you have in a disc clutch over a drum style clutch. Now this is EC's Ego Clutch. They do sell it in a two disc, three disc, as well as a four disc option for the three quarter inch crankshafts and you can get it in a four disc options for the one inch crankshaft. Now the one inch crankshaft of course is gonna be your big block engine from a 301 Predator or a GX270 Honda all the way up to the 440s and 460 engines on the market. Uh, now we have a three disc, three quarter drive clutch set here and this is for our dyno. We've actually worn out the bearings in our old three disc clutch that we've been running on the dyno and that's the best thing about these clutches. You can fully rebuild them as well as a drum clutch, but you're never going to get the life out of a drum clutch that you can get out of a disc clutch. So when we look at the Ego 3 disc racing clutch, you can see it has a ton of adjustabilities because of the six fingers that have bolts and nuts on those fingers, and as well as the six springs. Now you can adjust the tension on these springs to allow the clutch to engage at different areas, and you can also add more or less weight to the fingers to help it engage at different RPMs as well. You can kind of play with the tune to get the perfect engagement out of these clutches. Now, when we talk about horsepower, like how much horsepower can these items hold? Uh, I don't really know the limit, honestly, on a 30 series CVT. That really depends, about all these depend on your gearing. If you don't have it geared right, you're going to burn belts or you're going to burn out clutches. That's simple. You have to make sure you're doing your gearing correctly. Your gearing is going to be more aggressive with a clutch and less aggressive with the CVT because of how they work. CVT has gear ratios kind of built inside the system where a clutch is just what it is. The biggest difference between a disc clutch and a drum clutch is the amount of friction area that you have on the, the clutch. The drum clutch is going to use about 50% of the drum to have as friction area, where when you compare that to a disc based clutch, it is way better than a drum setup. A single disc clutch would have 6.78 inches squared of friction area. A two disc would have 13.56 inches squared. A three disc would have 20.34 inches squared. And a four disc would have 27.12 inches squared of friction area. So one disc on this disc clutch has the same friction area as a drum style clutch. So this is basically like you have three drum style clutches built into one, but you don't have the weight of three drum clutches as well as a parasitic loss. So you're gonna have uh, the quality of three drum clutches in a three disc clutch. So that means a disc based clutch can handle more power more efficiently. And that is huge when you start comparing it to a drum based clutch. Now you can turn a drum based clutch into a racing clutch, but it's never gonna perform like a three disc clutch. When you're drag racing people or you're racing on the track, you're gonna want every second to count. And that's why you wanna go with something as high quality as the EC's Ego clutch. And I would recommend the three disc and for most applications. Now on how much horsepower can these handle? The drum clutch is gonna handle anywhere from six to 11, 10 to 11 horsepower. It can handle more, but it is gonna wear faster and have more heat that goes in it. So you're not gonna get as much life out of the drum clutch. Of course, once you get in the higher horsepower builds. Now we've pushed as high as 23 horsepower through a CVT, never had a problem. As long as we had a gear correctly, we never ran through belts. Gearing is key with all these items. Now when we're looking at a disc space clutch, each disc should handle eight to 12 horsepower if set up correctly. So that means with this three disc clutch, we can handle a ton of power. And if you get the four disc clutch, it could handle as much as 60 horsepower. Now, when we look at dynos, everybody's dyno reads differently. And those differences can be up to 40%. And our dyno, we've tuned it the best of our abilities to get accurate numbers. We're not trying to inflate anything on our channel. So this uh, clutch in a four disc would probably handle around 60, possibly more horsepower on our dyno, which is a massive number uh, for an item like this. This clutch, this drum style clutch would never handle that kind of power. So that is huge. So when you set up the Ego clutch, you're gonna to wanna to get 
one of EC's carburetor's dial indicators. This is huge because it allows you to set each spring to the exact level as the other one, and that is a big deal. When you start adjusting on these springs, the heavier you make them, the more you tension them down. The more you squeeze the spring, the more spring tension it has, just like in a valve spring. So when we tighten this down, we want to equal that all the way around in all six springs, and that's what this dial indicator does. It simply slides over the spring, and you can measure its height. And you want to, again, make sure these are all set the same. This is a handy tool if you're going to be messing with a disc-based clutch. And uh, I highly recommend it. We have these linked in the video description as well. Now, when you adjust these springs, about every 15 thousandths of an inch is going to equal around 200 RPMs of an adjustment. So if we tighten these and lowered them 15 thousandths of an inch, we're going to have a 200 RPM difference in our clutch. So you can see there's a lot of adjustability by adjusting those springs as well as adding weight to the fingers and the fingers is what flies outward with the centrifugal force and starts activating the clutch and uh, pushing the plate into the clutch pads. Now when adjusting a disc based clutch, you can go through a lot of time just like really properly adjusting a carb. You're gonna to wanna to, of course go on the same exact track if you can to adjust out a disc based clutch. And with a drum clutch, there's really, it's more time consuming because you're having to disassemble the clutch every single time and the fact that there's only so many weights of shoes out there and springs out there, you're really limited on how much you can adjust one of these. But again, when you do have to adjust it, you're dropping the chain, you're pulling the clutch, you're gutting it out and pulling it apart to be able to work on this clutch. Where the disc based clutch, you don't have to do any of that. You can adjust it all with the car, with the clutch left on the car and the chain still on it and everything. So basically, if we add more spring tension by tightening it down, we're making the clutch come in later in the RPM band. If we add more weight to the fingers, we make the clutch come in sooner. So the lighter the weight, the more the engine's gonna have to rev to sling those fingers out to activate the clutch. That's basically the way to look at it. Now, when you're setting up one of these clutches, you wanna think of it like you do uh, for with your clutch in your car or your truck. If you dump the clutch in your truck or car, depending on where your RPM's at, and so if you're either gonna do one of two things, you're gonna stall the engine out, it's just gonna die, or it's gonna have a rough, choppy start or it's gonna spin the tires. And now this doesn't matter really about the horsepower, but engine RPMs uh, is what's gonna make the tires really spin. Now, you don't want to engage your clutch like that, of course, unless you're trying to do a burnout, because if you're spinning the tires or clunking off the line, you know that is not gonna get you any kind of acceleration. You wanna do it just like when you're in a car, you want a smooth transition from idle into power. And you, that normally takes about 300 RPMs to let a clutch fully engage it, just like if you was engaged it in your car. You're gonna start letting out the clutch, feel it grabbing, start easing into the throttle, and then it's gonna take off. Well, with one of these clutches, the more you rev it up, once it gets to that band, it's gonna start hitting in and biting, then it's gonna start taking off the vehicle, and that takes, again, about 300 RPMs to take off the vehicle and be fully engaged with the clutch. AC will also be sending detailed instructions on their clutches, breaking down everything about their clutches and also how to set them up so if you buy a clutch in the future, this will come prepackaged with it. Now, if you looked at all of our dyno series of videos, you'll notice that most of our engines makes around max torque, around 3000 RPMs. Some of them may make max torque at 5000 RPMs, but if you compare where it made torque from 3000 to 5000, it's normally just about a foot pound difference. So you can really start engaging somewhere around the 3000 RPM mark. That's normally where you want to come in at is around your peak torque numbers. But again, if you're making peak torque at 5,000 RPMs, you don't want your clutch to engage at 5,000 RPMs. You want to lower it down some. The best way to do this is find the sharpest turn that you're going to be going through on the track, maybe a hairpin or something where you're going to be slowing down a lot to go in that curve and then getting on it out of the curve. And that's going to be the best place to look at your times and really test and tune your clutch. Now, the real way to do this is with some data through something like an Alfano 6, um, and that is a display that kind of tracks GPS style, how fast you're going, your lap times and things like that. You can use a bunch of different devices. We'll link some in the video description, but that's the best way to really tune it. You can keep running that track, keep tuning on it, maybe adjusting these springs about 15 thousandths of an inch, adjust it up 200 RPMs, or lighten them up wherever you see fit. You really have to play with it because you don't want your clutch engaging at 5,000 RPMs and really slipping that clutch hard and because that's just going to put heat and damage your disc in your clutch. But when you're adjusting this clutch, you basically want to keep improving 
the spring pressure and stuff until you see the acceleration is not uh, enhancing anymore basically you just it's going to take a lot of time you can waste a full day on properly testing a clutch and you kind of need to do it yourself with your weight your driving habits on your cart uh it's hard to pay someone else to do that because they don't know how you drive how are you coming in and out of the acceleration how much do you weigh are you weighing the same as them a lot of factors that come in so you really need to test and tune your clutch yourself to get the most and the best performance out of it and the more you do it the better you're going to get and you could start tuning your clutches out faster if you want to keep multiple clutches for you know a race weekend so you're not rebuilding one clutch you might have several sitting on the bench ready to go that's set up to your locking but basically what we're saying is a rule of thumb is around two to three hundred uh rpms past your peak torque rpm so um i hope we explained a lot of stuff with these clutches these are great clutches we brand them on our dyno i can't tell you how many hits dyno hits we've done with our three disc clutch and it's actually still performing great it's just the bearing on the inside is starting to get worn out now that's the best thing you can fully rebuild these clutches you can buy a new disc if you like you can buy every piece to rebuild them so you could have this clutch for the rest of your life where this drum style clutch i wouldn't see you running something especially at the cost that it's at you're going to be replacing these and wearing them more often because of the friction area that they have and just the quality of the build these are made with who knows what especially if you're buying a chinese drum style clutch you don't know the materials they're not made for racing they're going to perform like they perform but if you really want the best numbers the best performance that you can get you're going to go with something like this ec ego three disc clutch or maybe you only need a two disc depending on your build you might not want to spend the extra money on a three disc or a four disc and you could go with a two disc option just look at what kind of power you're pushing if you're around 15 uh, horsepower a two disc is going to be perfectly fine for you but if you're over 20 getting close to 30 and then you probably should look at a three disc if you're beyond that if you're building some crazy methanol engines you may want a four disc clutch but we've linked all these items in the video description to help you guys find them if you're interested in buying them so thank you guys so much for checking out this video this is different type road to horsepower video uh, but we wanted to explain some of this stuff we are going to make a dedicated video on cvts and how they work and how to properly set up cvts from all the way up to using players pulleys or 780 comments uh, because there's a lot of companies out there putting false information and selling their kits completely wrong and that's why you guys are burning through belts and not getting the best performance out of your builds so we want to go over cvts in a separate video but for today that's all we got make sure to check out ec's ego clutches they are the best performance company that i believe that's in the in the game right now we love working with ec and they're helping us uh, get a lot of knowledge out to you guys so we really appreciate ec's part on the channel so thank you guys so much for watching we ask you to stay safe and god bless